take a look. I want to show you something pretty crazy. So actually, this is a uh, the heads to a 200 horsepower Yamaha outboard, and it's my uh, brother's boat. And uh, so we went down. He went down to go uh, start this engine up and go fishing, and it's on a 22 foot Mako, and uh, the engine was seized. So I went down there. We took the heads off. And there was water in the cylinder and it was rusted, uh, see, I, well, it was seized, but the cylinder were, were rusted shut, or rusted, and you couldn't, it was just totally locked up. So, I was able to, like, uh, brill pad the cylinder, I'll show you that when the engine gets back up here, but uh, we were able to get the rust off, and uh, I was able to unseize the engine, but, uh, so at first I didn't know what was, I thought it was just a bad head, head, head gasket on the head, that was a problem, but, uh, take a look at that. I don't know if you can see that right there. Grab a little pointer here. Right there. There's a hole in the head. So I noticed that when I uh, took this uh, water passage off here, the uh, the water jack which holds a thermostat on the head, I took it off. I noticed that there, was, there was carbon here, and I was like, okay, that doesn't look good. If there's actually black carbon exhaust carbon inside the, the water jacket. So as you can see, you can see that, but there's a hole that goes all the way down in through here. So it was leaking water into the cylinder, and at the exact, also at the same time it was blowing exhaust out. So um, this is actually what caused the actual seize. The cylinder walls are actually pretty good. I was able to catch it, you know, it was two weeks from the time that he, uh, he said it seized, from the time I got down and took the heads off. So. I'm actually going to put this in my sandblaster, and I'm actually going to take this down to my local guy. He's called Metal Fab, Costa Mesa, California, and um, see if he can actually TIG weld this up and get the engine back to going again. So it's a 200 horsepower out uh, outboard. I'm not sure if I said that or not. Yamaha. I'll show it to you when it gets in here, and it's a 22 foot Mako. So I'm going to sandblast this thing's totally clean. Try to get all this corrosion off. This the engine is 28 years old, so. Um, definitely pretty old. So I think it was the original engine on the boat. Uh, 1991. So. Alright, so I'm going to clean all this up and we'll be back. I'm going to paint it nice and clean. Get all this junk out, all the passages. And hopefully I can salvage this. So, alright. Alright, let me give you a little update here on the boat head project here. The Yamaha 200 outboard. It's been a couple weeks and I was trying to clean these up, and you obviously saw that. We tried to weld the head, you know, and I actually found other spots that were that were bad, like right there. That was actually kind of starting to go in, and then you know, there's other just little you know massive corrosion areas. So I decided just to get some other ones on uh, eBay. So I got these for about hundred bucks, actually hundred dollars shipped. And uh, look how nice these are, you know. I've already cleaned these up. I spent a lot of time sandblasting these things, and you know, um, like this is kind of like uh, sandblasted, and that's like pre-sandblasted. It was just hiding so many corrosion spots that these things were. Uh, I mean, I couldn't see fully what they looked like, but look at that. I mean, these things are almost new. Yeah, I mean, these are these are 20, 30 year old heads. But yeah, you're looking for corrosion in there, so I'm still going to take them apart just to make, make sure that there's something going on. Nothing hidden here, so it seems like the issue is the corrosion seems to happen between the head and this water jacket right here. And I think it's because people don't clean their, their boats off. They don't run their, their engines, the, the fresh water, through their engines long enough to allow the um, thermostat to open to flush this part of the thing out. Because the thermostat has to be opened up for fresh water to get in here. So if you run your outboard for only a few minutes just to do a quick flush, it's not going to flush out the, the water jacket. So, all right, yeah, 100 bucks. So, hopefully, I hope they don't do any welding on these things, but you know, just the way they looked in the pictures, you know, you can tell it's like way better. So, looking for there. This is actually where the head gasket goes, and I also got all the gaskets too spark plugs, all the gasket support. So, yeah, I don't want to bother with this anymore, you know. It's like too much work. Plus, I would have to do more welding, so. Um, Alright, so that's where I'm at with this thing. So, alright. Alright, so these are the new eBay heads right here. 
and there is some slight corrosion there but these came from Florida Let's see if I can open this up so you guys can see it I can it's hard to do with one hand here this is I'm not sure if I explain this the reason why the reason why this part is bad is because people don't flush their engine out long enough so then the fresh water never gets into this head to, to cool off I mean to uh, clean it out. Yeah, you have to run it for 50. This has to run long enough to allow the thermostats to open to allow the fresh water through. So that's why the engine has to get up to operating temperature. So that's why this side is always a lot cleaner because this is the fresh water side when you're flushing your engine out. The fresh water never gets down these paths because the thermostat never opens up to get down there. Alright, so glad I took these apart because I wanted to see if I have any major issues forming or starting like the other head. No, I'll, I'll compare it with the other head here in a couple seconds so you can see. Alright, cool. All right, I'm going to try to soak some of this stuff. Alright. It's like an anti-salt mix concentrate. I got the heads cleaned up here. Services. I mean, you're not really should. You really should normally use a wiggle, wiggle, uh, like a whiz wheel thing here, but uh, this thing was pretty pitted in certain areas. So I'm gonna probably run some silicone sealant, even though by the factory doesn't do that. But just there's so many little imperfections in it. So just as a precaution. So I got thin, tiny, tiny little layer just to, on the surface, and uh, my little torque wrench here, a little small torque wrench. And it says the torque specs right there. So that's the head head bolts, and then this is the uh, and the pattern for this thing right here. This this water jacket cover. All right. All right. There it is. Pentatonic. All right. All right, guys. Get thing off. All right, it's pretty seized up. Yeah, it was way worse before. It actually had rust all in the cylinders, preventing this thing from moving at all. That hole in the head was putting water in the cylinders. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's always a nightmare trying to get the zincs out of there. Replace the zincs. All right, guys, first fire up. Go for it. Back up here, Jackie. Give it a little gas, huh? Yeah. Oh, you did? 